What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the ZMAM Show. Mike here, and I hope you guys are ready for a fantabulous week of Halloween fun stuff. I got a bunch of movies that I'm still trying to get caught up on. Uh, scary movies, the ones I just like to rifle through. Friday the 13th, Halloween movies, Michael Myers is my favorite slasher character. Make sure to mention what your favorite scary movie is in the comments below as we get into Daryl Dixon, The Book of Carol, Episode 5. And so, with Madame Janae dead, um, it seems like... Um, well, not it seems like Lo Sang is basically taken over. He's now kind of combined the crews, and now he's looking for Laurent. All right, so we understand that. So he goes on the warpath looking for it. He goes to Falou's, like, a high-rise settlement or whatever where all the people... So he was hiding out there for a bit. We see Daryl gets to reunite with them. And um, Codron, you know, I'm going to admit, Codron's kind of character arc, I, <laughs> I kind of forgot at some point where, like, he had that turning point where I guess, I guess uh, something about how... Um, um, Laurent said something to him on the road or something like when he saved them. I totally forgot about that scene. I don't know how. But anyways, he definitely had a good guy character arc as we moved into this episode. And it was kind of fun to watch, to be honest. Um, I'm kind of surprised he forgave Daryl so quick. But it looks like he was finally reaching within himself and seeing that he was the evil one. He was the one driving all the the badness and the people around him and kind of letting it be okay. And for that, his brother got killed and his uh his team of fighters and everything else everything he, he's lost everything and so he finally does something good and um when uh lo sang and his men get to the compound where like that they try to pull it off but that damn rubik's cube was on the table because they tried to make it sound like oh yeah we need to go search for him you know because he's the one and yada yada and uh, anyways they figured out that's bull and so they managed to get out just in time and again, Codron's leading the charge here they man it managed to make it back to that cabaret place or whatever um that the one dude who used to date uh, uh, Isabel well, was there. Um, remember, he got killed. And so uh, Anna is now taken over. And, you know, I could have done with all the the flashy French BS whatever stuff. But, hey, I guess it's the scenery over in France. So, anyways, um, he, they're hiding out there. Um, we have some other things going on because Daryl also needs fuel. So they're trying to figure out where Ash is because Ash, we see uh, at some point. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I forgot to mention this part. So... Uh, Ash is on the run from some zombies because it looks like some men were trying to get in to get to the plane. Of course, that makes sense. And I had been wondering about that, too. Because you know somebody was going to be looking out for that plane. And so uh, he set a bunch of booby traps, killed most of them, but then I guess he had to move out on the run. And he manages to get into a car. Terrible idea, but I guess he was tired, so let's just go with it. And he manages to try to get out, and then the door comes back and just knocks him straight out in the head. And he has like a minor concussion, or maybe major. It was pretty solid, because I think he said he was in that car for two days. So I'd say that was a pretty major concussion. So with Ash out of commission, at least at the time being in the car, uh, Daryl and Carol are now on the look out for him so they go to Anna at the cabaret because they're the ones that know information about whatever and so they happen to mention uh, Madame Genet's old compound or whatever and they said there's not much of it left well they get out there and that was a very interesting place and also like I said I said this had some high and low points this was one that it was just kind of confusing so they just didn't give us a whole lot of much context to it so Daryl and Carol get back to the compound this is the one where remember Carol was riding out with the horse and she gets caught and all that other stuff so Everybody's dead. All the guards are dead. Any civilians it looks like were dead. I mean, this place is just coated in walkers all over the damn place, or the hungry ones, if you will. And so they're looking for them. They go into this um, one interior area, and all these zombies are, like, uh, cornered off into this room with this, like, plexiglass kind of, or sh shatterproof glass, I guess, uh, surrounding. And they're looking to see if Ash is there, and he's not. Um, and then they look out and they see this vehicle with a bunch of zombies around and thinking, hey, something might be alive in there. Oh, well, and good. Um, I just, I'm just trying to figure out, like, who came through and wiped all these people out? I mean, it doesn't seem like Anna's crew is that well-armed. I mean, they have some people with guns and stuff, but I'm just like, who did all this dirty work? So, and I, it doesn't sound like it was Losang's group because, I don't know, he's kind of like, we don't want to kill if we don't have to. And he kind of proved that, too, on that high-rise top. Like, he could have killed all of Falu's people uh, for lying to him, but he didn't. He let them live. So, I'm not going to give Losang points for that, but... I guess at least it was a decent thing to do, I suppose, even though they were lying to him. So they they get out there, and the big plan was to get into the car with whoever said person was. Now they open the door, and they see, I guess, it's Ash, but then they just jump right in, and they close the doors. And I'm like, so now you're all surrounded by zombies. How is that a great idea? So, again, because sto said story has to happen, right? I guess. So they find some stuff inside the car. They find some of those trank darts and, you know, a case that Daryl busts open or whatever. Ash, mind you, is half out of it, so he can barely walk, probably. 
And so what was interesting that went down here is Daryl shot two zombies out there with the secret serum or whatever, and they went into their full-blown black eye crazy zombie mode. And apparently these things murder, and again, forgive me if I just miss this whole part, but they kill their own zombies too. As I say it, I think I remember this, but I don't remember seeing enough of it. So all of a sudden we start seeing all this blood splatter out there. At first I was like, oh, maybe some, uh, someone's out there trying to save them. But no, quickly we figured out it was the zombies, the, the crazy zombies. And so they're just destroying these zombies out there. And then one bus, well, even though they're being quiet, I will say it was a pretty intense scene. One bus through the window, they kill that one, whatever. You saw the scenes. But what I thought was really weird is after they kill the two that went crazed and they get out to get Ash out of that area, like a lot of this, there's a ton of zombies on the ground, a ton of them. And I'm trying to understand in that 30 to 45 seconds, what? Was, were those two crazy zombies just run around and clotheslining everybody and then eating a few along the way? And so I'm just like, it was a very chaotic and confusing scene. It just made no sense to me. If you understood what happened in that scene, please type into the comments and explain to me so my brain can be better. I don't know. So there's that. They get away with Ash. Let's fast forward through some stuff, whatever. Uh, Carol finally reveals to Ash the truth. Daryl says, you need to stop lying to this guy, which I was thinking about this this entire season. I haven't really liked Carol. This show is, you know, this part of the show is called The Book of Carol. I gotta be honest. I'm just not... I don't know, guys. I thought I liked Carol more than I thought I did. I don't think that makes sense, but I'm finding I don't. I really don't like her. <laughs> She's just not really a great person. And and by the way, this, obviously the show set it up this way to have that drama between the two of them. And it, it worked because I'm feeling it. And Ash is freaking upset. So she reveals that she lied, which by the way, was a... I don't like Melissa McBride, but I just feel... I, I don't know if that performance just pulled off the way I wanted to. Unless she just meant for it to be a really cold and just kind of half-ass apology. Because it, it really started off that way. And Ash is just floored. He is pissed and i get it i felt his rage i like that guy he's cool he's cool as a character and he's uh he's, he's a good actor and i just i could tell i'm like and he was right and everything he said to her i mean what kind of person does that talk you know lies about their dead daughter just to get what she could have easily just said this is why i need to get over there anyways again just so show and drama can happen that's why it happened but uh so he kind of goes off he picks up a wrench which i mean he wasn't gonna hurt her but he's 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 mad he walks off and we end off there so the final big scene show off if you will is when uh back at the cabaret uh lo sang's men and him and then uh that woman i think her name i want to get it right so that'd be uh jacinta I think it, they don't say it many times, so it's Jacinta, long, dark-haired female, kind of the second antagonist, uh, second to Losang. So they get there, they have a handful of their men, and as they look up, they see some people running into the rafters. So obviously it's Daryl and Laurent and all them and whatever. So they follow them up there, and they go into the catacombs, and I was like, oh man, this is going to go down. So I will say, I feel that was a high point of the catacombs. It was just fun. It was dark. It was creepy. I, we, I mean, I didn't know if any zombies would be in there. There, there weren't any. But uh, the way that um, Codron and Daryl split up and then took out the henchmen and then had their little standoffs with the two antagonists, Lusang and Jacinta, I thought that was pretty fun. And Daryl, you know, he was kind of getting his ass whooped. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, Lusang, he definitely was good with that staff. I'd like to see him and Morgan go at it. How about that? Who do you think would win? Morgan or Lusang? Probably Morgan is my guess, but I, like I said, that dude was not bad. But uh, Daryl gets the best of him, and he knocks him in the face with a freaking skull. And it just, and uh, this was, mind you, when Daryl was just about to get stabbed and get taken out. Um, I did feel the pressure there, although you know Daryl wasn't going to die. I mean, let's face it, I'm 99% sure he wasn't. But, uh, but he does, he slams it right in the face, and then off camera he slams it down another four or five times into his head. So Lusang is no more, definitely dead. Um, definitely was due for that dude, because he was a, he's a zealot, you know what I mean? Or like he was a leader of zealots. And he just didn't get it. I mean, if he were to let Laurent get bit, he's going to die. You know, it, it doesn't work that way. But whatever, I digress. And then at the same time, you got uh, Codron fighting Jacinta. And she was good with that uh, samurai sword again. So who do you think would win? Jacinta or Michonne? That would be very interesting. Uh, I think I'm going to lean towards Michonne probably. She's just damn good with that thing. But um, Codron does get stabbed. I thought that might have taken him out or maybe he was going to turn to a zombie. But he made it out of there okay. But he threw her up against the wall after getting pretty pissed at her for doing that. And she's still alive. We saw that scene. She takes the breath. He didn't open her eyes, but she's definitely alive. And so I assume she'll be that continued antagonist as we get into episode six and seeing 
how our four members are going to get out, and four members as in Daryl, Carol, Laurent, and Ash, except we have one more bombshell that drops. When Daryl and them get back, and then, you know, Laurent's all happy to see the plane, he's never seen one before, and, you know, he's fin he finally made the decision that, yes, he will come back to America, Daryl convinced him, that's great, and he's very happy, and then they get back there, and then Ash is like, yeah, except for one little problem, this thing can't hold four. So that's, that's an issue, because I'm trying to think to myself in my mind, who would go? I mean, who would stay behind? I, you know, because none of them can fly except for Ash, so he's got to go. So who's going to get left behind? This is a good question. I know some of you know, please don't spoil it in the comments. I'd like to wait and see the final episode, because I haven't been watching ahead. I've been kind of enjoying it one week at a time. So those are pretty much the big highlights of what went down. Like I said, I loved Codrone's kind of turn to the good side and doing what was right. And although he hasn't forgiven Daryl, and like I said, they're... Like, Daryl was, he was very thanky, thanky, you know, he's like, I owe you one, and he put his hand on his shoulder, and I thought that was cool. Uh, I know absolutely that Godron has not forgiven Daryl, but, you know, and I think we could have seen a little bit more dialogue there, you know? I think that was a missed opportunity. Uh, I know it's a short show, but I would have liked to see that if if they could have fit it in. Maybe there's some in episode six, I'll find out soon enough. Um, and then, like I said, the low points... The zombie scene where they're in the car, it was a very stupid decision to get in there. Kind of cool, like, seeing it all go down and the super zombies, but I was just like, I just didn't understand how they took out all those zombies that were surrounding that car in less than a minute, and then when they get out of the car, they're all just kind of laying around. Actually, a good portion of them were still alive. I mean, there were, like, heads and pieces missing. I'm just, I'm really, I would have paid to be the fly outside of the car watching that go down, just so I could have an understanding to it all. Again, I guess I'm nitpicking, but... It would have been nice to have some context. So let me know what you thought about tonight's episode. I'm done with my rant. I thought overall it was pretty good. I think I'd just give this a solid 7 to 7.5. Um, the show's been pretty decent overall. I, I know. Not everybody's loving it. Um, I know my wife, she's kind of bored with it. I think she fell, she fell asleep tonight. But uh, we had a long day, like you said. We were building the Halloween display and whatnot. So I made it. I'm here. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know what you're going to be doing for Halloween, what your favorite scary movie is, all that good stuff. Let's get some comments going. So have a great Halloween, and I'll catch you guys at the next review. See ya.